Okay, good morning to all our viewers. I'm Teacher Victor. Today we are going to uh, learn about health education standard eight. And uh, I would like to ask learners who are watching me to at least have their notebook so that they can take some few short notes in case for revision purposes. So we are going to learn health education as our topic. And uh, in class eight, health education is all about uh, STI, sexually transmitted infections. Or they are also called venereal diseases. And they are also called sexually transmitted diseases. So we are going to learn about sexually <coughs> transmitted transmitted <coughs> infections then uh, in class 8 we have uh, four main uh, sexually transmitted infections and they are as followed one we have HIV and AIDS we have H IV, stroke, AIDS, that is one, two. We have syphilis, we have syphilis. <coughs> the second one we have, uh, uh, let's say syphilis. <coughs> Another one we have gonor go go gonorrhea. Another one we have, uh, <coughs> we can talk of uh, genital herbs. Then we also have, uh, <coughs> we also have uh, chancroid. So according to our syllabus, these are the five main uh, sexual transmitted infections that I want us to learn today. So let us start uh, with what are these sexually transmitted infections? Because I know that one is very important. Sexually transmitted uh, diseases uh, are diseases which are caused by microorganism. They are caused by microorganism, as you can see on my slide, the, my first slide. They are caused by microorganism, which are bacteria and viruses. These are bacteria and viruses. So they are mainly spread. They are mainly spread through having sexual intercourse with an infected person. I want you to be very clear on that. They are mainly caused by having sexual intercourse uh, with an infected person. I hope we are clear on that. Then. There are also other ways of spreading STI. Other ways, other ways, other ways of spreading, spreading ST, STI. Remember, at the beginning I said the main, the main cause or the main way of getting these diseases is by, the main way of getting these diseases is by having sex. The main way of spreading these diseases is by having sex with someone who is infected already. But there are also some other ways which one can get these diseases. One, we have what is called deep kissing. As you can see on my slide, I have written deep kissing. So another way we have open wounds. Open wounds is also a way of getting these diseases. Another one is blood transfusion. Remember when one is being given a blood which is not screened, it is very, it is very dangerous. If someone is being uh, given uh, a blood which is not screened, it is very dangerous. Then we also have mother to child. 
a mother can pass this disease to a child when he, well, during the birth. During the birth, it is very easy for a child to get these diseases. Then, let us now go to the first one, which is syphilis. I want us to start with the first one, which is syphilis. So, syphilis is one of the common disease that can be transmitted through sexual uh, intercourse with one which is uh, who is affected. So let us start with syphilis. We have our syphilis here. <coughs> Good. So let us look at the cause of syphilis. It is caused by bacteria. I want you to be very clear on that. If you check at my third slide, it is caused by uh, by bacteria. The name of that bacteria is called Triponena. <coughs> Triponema uh, palladium. Triponema palladium. That is a bacteria which causes uh, syphilis. So I need you to know that. Uh, syphilis is one of the diseases which are caused by bacteria. Then, let us look at the signs and symptoms of syphilis. Let us look at the signs and symptoms of syphilis. One, there is painless sore around genitals. Painless sore around genitals. That is one of the causes. You will not get, you will not have any pain, but there will be some signs that you have. Two, there are rashes appearing on the body. There are rashes appearing on the body. Three, if it is not treated at early stage, there, uh, there might be madness or heart attack in case of severe cases, if it is now too much on our body. Five, it can also cause paralyzed. Somebody can be paralyzed, a situation where somebody's parts are not functioning properly. So that is also some of the causes of syphilis. If you go to my the next slide, if you go to my next slide, you will see <coughs> some of the pictures that show uh, a person who has these uh, diseases. If you go to my next slide, you will see a person, that is my slide number four, you will see some pictures of a person who is suffering uh, with uh, this disease known as syphilis. You can see those uh, rashes on the body. If you look at the hand, if you look at the hand, you will see those rashes also on the hand. So those are some of the signs of syphilis. Then after that, let us go to the second one because I have a very short time. Uh, let us go to the next one, which is uh, gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is also uh, gonorrhea. Uh, you can, you, you can see the pictures there. You can see the, uh, those people, uh, uh, th some of the signs of syphilis. Then the next one, we... Okay. So, uh, let us go to the next one, which is gonorrhea. We have our next one, which is gonorrhea. <coughs> Good, that is another STI, sexually transmitted infections. So some of the sign, before I go to the sign, let us look at the cause of gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is caused by a bacteria. It is also caused by bacteria, caused by bacteria. The name of this bacteria which causes gonorrhea is called Nasseria gonorrhea. The bacteria is called Nasseria. So this is the name of the bacteria that caused gonorrhea. Then let us look at some of the signs and symptoms of this disease. One, there is pain when urinating. There is pain when urinating due to inflammation of urethra. I want you to be clear to know that there are some pains due, due to inflammation in urethra. Two, pass that have bad smell come out uh, of urethra. Pass that have bad smells 
comes out of urethra. Three, difficult in passing urine. When you want to urinate, it will be not easy to come out. When you come to urinate, it will not be easy to come out. Three, it can also cause blindness. Moso when a mother is giving birth to children. When a mother is suffering from this disease, it is very easy to give birth to a child who is blind. Four, it might lead to infertility if not treated at the right time. You will find that somebody is not giving birth. Reason, this person has suffered from gonorrhea, an extent that it, uh, the person cannot have is uh, productivity. So those are some of, some of the signs of uh, syphilis. Then we can, uh, we can look at the next slide. You will find a child who has been born with blindness due to gonorrhea. A child who has been born with uh, blindness due to gonorrhea. So it is advisable. Uh, it, uh, it, it, be, it be treated at the right time before it goes uh, for so long period of time. If you look at the picture on my next slide there, you will see a child who has been born with uh, blindness due to gonorrhea. Then let us go to the next one, which is, uh, let us go to the next one, which is uh, chancroid. This is another very vital disease. So we have, good, we have our, another sexually transmitted infection that is uh, chancroid. Mostly it is not being set to our level much, but it is good to have that knowledge so that when you see such kind of some signs, you can be much aware of which precautions to take. So in chancroid, it is caused by bacteria. The first three diseases I have mentioned, they are caused by bacteria. I'm repeating that. I know most of the students, you get confused when you get those questions. Uh, uh, you get confused when uh, you get these questions on these uh, sexually transmitted diseases. So I have said it is also caused by bacteria. The bacteria is called, the bacteria is called Fastadius, Fastadius gramma negative. <clears throat> so this is the bacteria which caused uh, chancroid or chancroid. Then we can look at some of the signs and symptoms of, uh, of uh, chancroid. So it has only two main uh, uh, signs and symptoms. One, there is painful sore in genitals that are regular in shape. Let me repeat that. There are painful sore uh, in genitals that are regular in shape. Two, there are swelling of lymph glands. Yes, the glimpse will start swelling. So those are some of the main signs and symptoms of chancroid. Then after that, we can go to uh, our next, you can see the picture, a person who is suffering some of the signs of uh, chancroid. If you see the next slide, you will see a picture there, uh, a part of a body with some signs of uh, chancroid. Then let us go to the main one. And this one, we must take it very serious. It is very essential because most of the papers we usually do, it is the one which they usually set. That is HIV and AIDS. I'll dwell much on HIV and AIDS because if you look at the past KCP papers, I will give you analysis how this question, uh, they do set it. But most of the questions are always being set uh, to these HIV and AIDS. So our next one is HIV stroke AIDS. Now, that is where I'm going to dwell so much. First, we must know the definition of AIDS. The definition of AIDS. Two, we must also know the definition of HIV. That is something which is very vital. 
uh, all candidates who are watching me, AIDS is being taught in, uh, if I'm not wrong, from class four. Then HIV is also being taught uh, from class four. Now, let us start by the definition of AIDS. AIDS uh, is, um, is uh, yeah, we, uh, okay, let me first tell you the cause of AIDS. So AIDS is caused by virus known as HIV. I hope I'm much clear on that. AIDS is caused by virus known as HIV. So what is HIV? Meaning a person cannot have AIDS if you don't have this virus of HIV. So let us start with HIV. HIV is human immunodeficiency virus. Human, human immunodeficiency virus. That is, uh, that is, uh, HIV. Then AIDS, it is itself, uh, I have said, caused by <coughs> it is caused by a virus which is HIV. If you look at the, the first three main uh, sexually transmitted infections, uh, only AIDS is being caused by virus and other, uh, others which I'll tell you. So, already we know the cause of HIV. Now, let us look at other ways which an individual can get AIDS. Remember at the beginning, I said very clear that all these sexually transmitted infection are mainly caused by, uh, are mainly spread through sexual intercourse with an infected person. Now, there are some other ways which, somebody, which someone can get HIV. So let us look at other ways of getting HIV. Other ways of getting HIV. <coughs> other ways. <coughs> ways of getting Getting HIV, stroke AIDS. <clears throat> Good. So one of the ways that one can get HIV, one, is by sharing infected cutting and sharp tools. Sharing infected cutting and sharp tools. Two, through blood transfusion. Remember at the beginning I said any blood which is trans, uh, which which you want to uh, give to another person must be screened. So if the blood is not screened, it is very easy for our, an individual to get the viruses. More so when the blood which is being transmitted to another person is not, is not screened. So blood transfusion is very essential that it must be screened. The virus can also be passed through mother to child more so during birth. That is why it is advisable when our, when expectant mothers want to give birth, it is very easy for them to go to the hospital so that they can be helped properly. Then deep kissing. This is a situation whereby the exchange of saliva, the exchange of saliva uh, can, uh, if one person is infected with this disease, it is very easy uh, when they are in the act of kissing one another, it is very easy for one to pass it to the another person. Then it is very important to know some of the body fluids that might contain this virus. Body fluids, uh, let's look at some body fluids that contain, contain the virus. <coughs> Because I know sometimes, one day, one time, you might get a question uh, of asking you, name one of, the, uh, one of the fluids that contain virus. So one of the body fluids that contain virus, we can talk to of reproductive fluids. We have reproductive, reproductive, 
fluids. That is one. Two, we can talk of uh, blood. Blood is also a body fluid that might uh, pass that uh, virus to another individual. So in reproductive fluids, remember we have two reproductive fluids here. We have semen and another one we have, uh, we have semen and another one we have what? We have what is called vaginal fluids. We have also vaginal fluids. <clears throat> Good. So these are some of the two main body fluids that can uh, carry the virus. So we must be so much uh, we must be so much keen when we are handling uh, that question. Then after that, we can look at the stages. Remember, I'm handling class eight work, but stages are being taught in class five. So I'll just brief you how this. Uh, when, uh, one, uh, when an individual has been found with HIV, how it will be uh, uh, moving or how it will be, uh, how you will be staying with it within your body. So the first one, the first stage we have, a uh, stage which is called window stage. The first stage is window, window stage. That is the first stage. Then we have the second stage, which is incub uh, incubation stage incubation stage or asymptomatic asymptomatic stage that is the the second stage then we have symptomatic stage i'll explain all the stages symptomatic stage then another one we have uh, full blown we have full blown. So let me just brief you on all these stages. So the first one I have said, we have window stage. This is a situation where one has been tested positive, but the, 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 there are no signs. The person is very healthy. You can't tell whether the, he has or he doesn't have the virus. Then we have incubation stage or asymptomatic stage. This is where by some signs, you can start seeing some signs, but they are not much visible. They are not much clear. Then we have symptomatic stage. This is where somebody is now suffering and each and every person can now identify this person is suffering from this uh, virus. Then full blown is where somebody is now, you are almost dying. Uh, the signs are now extreme and uh, you cannot control them uh, more. Now, after knowing the stages, it is good also to know, it is good also to know how, how will you find out you are HIV positive or you are HIV negative. So that one will help us to go to HIV test. HIV test. I'm dwelling on HIV because it is one of the essential topic which are being set. I'll show you uh, how they usually set this question. Now, let us go to the test. Remember, the test of HIV is called ELISA test. That is one thing I want you to, rem to remember. The topic of health education is in the second unit, and it is very essential. Sometimes it is good. We review the previous uh, things that we have done. So the test of HIV is called a LISA test. Then it is done in VCT, voluntary, uh, voluntary counseling and testing centers. It is done on VCT, voluntary uh, counseling and testing centers. Then there are some two things that we must know before an individual uh, uh, had decided to go to uh, this test. One, we have what is called post, post and pre-testing. That is something which is very essential. We have pre-testing and post-testing. We have pre-testing and post-testing. 
Good. So which one comes first? The first one is pre-testing. Let us start with this pre-testing. What is pre-testing? What is pre-testing? Pre this is a situation whereby when one individual has decided to go to the hospital to get the test of HIV, the, 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 the doctors or the person who wanted, who want to test you at that hospital will first uh, talk to you. The counseling that you will be given first at the hospital or at the voluntary center, that is what is called pre-testing. The advices, the counseling. Remember, you cannot just move to the hospital and you find yourself being tested. You must talk to those people so they will advise you what you do in case you are negative or you are positive. I want you to be, to, to be very keen on what I'm saying. Pre-testing is the counseling that an individual is given before the actual testing has been given. That is pre-testing. Then we have post-testing. Post-testing. So post-testing will be given if an individual, if an individual already you have been tested, but you have not been told the result. So let, let us know that. Already you have, you have been tested, but you don't have the result. That is post-testing. Why do you think they do this pre-testing and post-testing? One, they are doing pre-testing and post-testing so that at least you overcome the fear of the result. Or, 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 you, you, they do this post-testing so that you be sure with what they are going to tell you. I hope you are getting me. So, post-testing, already you have been tested, but you don't know the result. In case you are positive, you will be advised how to live so that you cannot get the a virus. In case you are positive, you will be advised how to live with the virus without uh, uh, too much fearing, without uh, too much stress. So those are some of the uh, importance of pre-testing and post-testing. Now, let us go to the importance of HIV testing importance of HIV testing. If you look at my next slide there, you will see some of the importance of HIV testing. One, one, people are encouraged to go for tests so that they can overcome fear. You know, when you hear people talking about HIV, many of us, we usually start stressing up ourselves more so if you know how you usually move in and out, maybe when your parents are not there. So the main reason why sometimes we get tested one is to overcome fear by knowing our status. It is very important to know that. Two, to adults or to youth, it is important to go for HIV tests so that we can decide to our marriage partners, to decide on who to marry and who uh, not to marry. Three, it can also help us to change on our behaviors. It, is, it can help us to change on our behaviors. That is very essential when we go for this test. Four, it can help us to develop the skills how we can live or how we cannot live with HIV virus. I want you to be much keen when I'm mentioning the importance of HIV uh, test. You remember, at times I am positive, okay? Maybe if I am positive, it, is, it will not be easy for me to mingle with other people because I might be having that fear that I might affect them or they might know my status. So when you go to the test, it will help you to have the skills on how to live with the virus or if you don't have the virus, it will help you to know, to have the skills on how to live without getting these viruses. 
So that is very important uh, part of HIV that we must also know. Then let us go and look at the, <coughs> we look at the, some of the importance. Uh, after dealing with HIV, let us now look at the effective ways of, uh, of dealing with HIV. So let us look at the control measures of HIV and AIDS. Control measures, some of the things that we can do so that we don't get involved much. <coughs> so let us talk of control measures. Measures of HIV stroke AIDS. Good. So some of the control measures of HIV so that it cannot be spread much on the, uh, uh, it cannot be spread much. One is to create public awareness. That is control measure. Create public awareness. That is very imp important. Create public awareness. That is one. Two, we can talk of uh, <coughs> campaigning through mass media. Through mass media. Then the last one, we can talk of uh, mass education. We can talk of mass mass education. Education. So these are some of the control measures of HIV and AIDS. The, word, uh, the reason why we are talking too much on control measures, these are some of the things that can be done publicly for everybody so that you be much aware of the spread of HIV AIDS. So the three uh, control measures are very essential. So it will be good for me to at least explain each, uh, each control measure. So that one will help me to, we start with creating public awareness. This is a situation whereby, this is a situation whereby everybody is being told about HIV. Let me repeat myself. This is a situation whereby everybody is being told about HIV. So public uh, awareness or creating public awareness can be done through the following uh, ways. One, through church services. Church services. That is one. It can also be done through chief meetings or baraza through chief meetings or, or baraza it can also be done uh, uh, within the funerals we can talk of funerals funerals and lastly it can also be done through weddings Remember, the topic is creating public awareness. You cannot show people about HIV AIDS when you are within your, uh, your place or within your locality. So you, the aim of creating public awareness is to get many people. So that is why some of the places where we can find many people is either church or chief can decide to call uh, for a baraza, or f in funerals, because we know many of us, we love going to funerals. So it is very easy to pass the information about HIV uh, in those places, even wedding. So these are some of the places which will help people to know much about HIV and AIDS. So let us go to the second one, and that is um, use of media use of media. 
That one is very simple. It is what I'm trying to do right now as you are watching uh, use of media. So as, I'm, uh, as I am teaching right here, you are listening and you are knowing much about HIV and AIDS, use of media. So use of media, remember we have so many ways of communication, so many uh, categories of communicating to people at home. Like the one I'm doing here, this is mass media. So one, we can talk of radio. Remember, radio is the most effective one because it will reach many people. Then another one we can talk of television. We have television. Then we can have postures. Postures. Then we can have newspapers and magazines. We can talk of newspapers, newspapers, and lastly, we can talk of magazines. So these are some of the uh, control measures of uh, HIV through use of mass media. Let me repeat radio. Radio is one of the most effective one, most effective way of giving people, many people information at a very short period of time. It won't need so many things uh, for you to get the information. Then the last one of, uh, of uh, ways of controlling uh, HIV AIDS is by use of uh, mass education. We can talk of mass, mass education. Education. So that is also another way of telling people much about HIV AIDS. So under mass education, it can be done through seminars, can talk of seminars. <clears throat> then we can talk of uh, workshops. I'll explain. We have workshops. Then lastly, we can talk of uh, public rallies. So let us look. Let me explain uh, each and every uh, each and every ways of uh, educating people uh, by mass education. So seminars, this is a situation whereby we'll find people can decide, even uh, individuals or organization can decide to call people for seminars. So they will, uh, they will tell people about HIV and AIDS. Then workshop, maybe you have gone for specific trainings. Those trainings you can be told about uh, HIV and AIDS. Then we have public rallies. This is a situation whereby you find yourself that uh, uh, there is a rally somewhere. There is somebody who wants to address people. So the, 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 the HIV and AIDS uh, organizations can come and also spread the news of HIV and AIDS. Now, after learning all about all this sexually transmitted infection, it is very important to know the prevention measures for all these diseases. Remember, at the beginning of my lesson, I said that the main cause of HIV and AIDS, the main cause of HIV and AIDS is having sexual intercourse with infected people, having sexual intercourse with infected people. So it is very vital to know some of the prevention measures, prevention of sexually transmitted, transmitted infections. So what are some of the ways that we might be using uh, to prevent? Remember, there is a very, dif uh, very big difference between control measures and prevention uh, ways. Control is telling people about the disease. 
So it is personal decision for an individual to, uh, to prevent this disease, not to get it on, he, on uh, herself or on himself. That is control measure. Then prevention measure, these are some of the things that now an individual can do on his own ways. So one of the control measures, one, is abstain. You abstain. Uh. Remember, abstinence is for mostly for unmarried people. For unmarried. For unmarried. Meaning youths or young adults, it is advisable for you to abstain for not having sex with another partner. Another one we can talk of, uh, we can talk of being faithful. Being being faithful. You being faithful. This is, a, this is a, applicable for only married people. This, this question is very vital because they usually like setting in March. In fact, if you will see my questions, you'll find they like a setting question on prevention measures. And many of us, we do answer those questions through control measures. So we have being faithful to partners who are, only, to partners, uh, who are married. We be faithful to only partners who are married. So this is applicable for married people. The first one was applicable for unmarried people. So it is good for youths and also for young adults. Then we can talk of use of condoms. Use of condoms. We have use of condoms. That is applicable for married. So yeah, we can say married. Married. Then uh, lastly, we can talk of early treatment of treatable diseases like uh, uh, syphilis, early treatment. E.g. other sexually transmitted infections. Yes, remember when one is suffering from uh, those other sexually transmitted infections, and that is syphilis, gonorrhea, and uh, genital herpes, even chancroid, it is very easy for you to get HIV. So it is advisable that when you are affected with those other diseases, you can get uh, you can be treated first before it reaches the stage of, uh, of, uh, of being affected with HIV. So those are some of the prevention, I mean some of the prevention measures that an individual should take to, for you not to get this uh, HIV or other diseases. Then finally, I want us to look at how these questions are being set. If you look at the next slide there, it is very advisable for you to know how these questions are set. The question of STIs, the questions of STIs, uh, they have been set since 2006. If you look at the next slide, there you will find the question of STI had been set, uh, they, uh, have st they, they started setting them since 2006. And in 2006, they said uh, only one question. They were only having one question there. And that is, uh, you can see on your screen there, you will see the following are stages of HIV infection. So in 206, they set only the stages. And then they asked the learners to arrange the stages of infection. At the beginning of my lesson, so when I was handling HIV AIDS, I said the first stage is window stage, where somebody is very healthy. It is not easy for you to identify the, 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 the any sign. 
Then the second stage is incubation stage or a symptomatic stage. Then the another stage there is symptomatic. At least there are some signs showing that you are positive. Then the last stage there is full blow. I know many of you will get confused as death is also a stage. Death is not a stage in HIV. I may, let me repeat that. At times they, they, we get confused when we see that they are bringing for us uh, death as also an option for the stages of HIV. So that is 206. If you look at 207 there, the next slide, you will find they ask the, which statement is true about HIV. Remember in class five, we are also being taught about misconceptions and myths on HIV. So it is very important or very essential for you to know the truth about HIV. So you can see which one of the following is true uh, mm, about HIV statement, which is true about the HIV, that is 207. In 208, they said only one question about HIV, that is, which one of the following statements is about HIV and it is true. So it was repeated. Why do you think they did that? They were doing that because many people by that time were having myths and misconception about the disease. So they wanted to, uh, learners at least to be much more, uh, to know much more about the virus. Then in 209, they also set uh, two questions. That is, uh, one, the general one, which was asking about this STIs, sexually transmitted infection, and one of HIV. Then in 2009, they, 2010, they talked about, uh, they talked about uh, <clears throat> the statement which is not true about HIV. That is, they were still dealing with myths and misconception about HIV. If you look at 2011, there was also another one question. That is, which one of the following uh, most effective preventive so that one was the first time they set a question on preventive measures of HIV. Remember, when I was explaining about HIV, I said we have controlling measures. Controlling is absolutely not the same with prevention measures. Controlling is making people to know about the disease. While preventive measures, these are things that one individual can undergo so that you cannot be affected with these diseases. Then in 2012, they ask a question on uh, incubation stage, that is class five work, incubation stage. What are some of the things that happens in incubation stage? Uh, and uh, allow me to at least to explain some few things uh, under incubation period. You can see the question was a person in incubation period of HIV infection will show signs and symptoms, but test negative. That is very big wrong. The moment you are affected and you are on these stages, if you see somebody is on these stages, already this person is positive. So the, 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 the choice A was wrong because they are talking of test negative. Then choice B, no sign, no symptom. Remember, we are already on a stage of HIV. So you cannot talk of no signs, no symptoms, okay? You cannot talk of no signs and no symptoms. Then you, if you go to choice C, no signs, no symptoms, but test negative. No, reason, already we are on one of the stages, so it cannot be a negative. Then the last one, signs, symptoms, but test positive. Signs, symptoms, but test positive. Yes, there are some signs and there are also some symptoms, but that person must be uh, positive. So the correct choice, the correct answer there was D. Then let us go to the next question, which is 2013. They also set only one question on HIV. That is a question about uh, one who is infected, a question of a, an individual who is infected. Then in 2014, they set two questions. Remember the time they set these two questions, they must ask you a general question on STI and one for HIV. So in 2014, they set two questions. That is, a certain person looks healthy 
and strong, but tested positive for HIV and AIDS. In which one of the following stages of HIV and AIDS was the person likely to be? That one must be first two stages. It is not easy when somebody is at window stage for you to identify the signs and symptoms. I want you to be much clear to know that. So the first two, st the answer was supposed to be on the first two stages, either window stage or incubation stage, stroked uh, asymptomatic stage. So uh, with that uh, knowledge, I hope you are able to see the answer. Then the second question in 2014 was, the following are sexually transmitted infections. The following are sexually transmitted infection, except that one was very easy. And uh, for you, as a candidate, you can see the answer there, because when we were starting our unit, I, I gave all the examples of uh, sexually transmitted infections or venereal uh, diseases, and you are able, I, I hope you are now able, you can see which one is the answer. Then in 2015, in 2015, they also ask a question on uh, the least way of transmit of getting HIV. The least. The question was very, very easy for those students who are keen. The least way. Many of you, I know many of you uh, took or decided to have uh, choice C. If you can see on your screen there, choice C, many of you were running to these vaginal secretions or the vaginal uh, uh, fluids. But the question was very simple. They were only asking the least way. So you can see there we have bre uh, breast milk, semen, and saliva. So the one which, can, uh, which we can identify as the least way of spreading these diseases through breastfeeding. Remember, I want to tell you this. A child will only get this disease when he or she has reached six months. At the age of six months, already this child has some uh, deciduous teeth. So it might, the child might bite, might bite the mother's breast and that blood might affect the child. So the least way of getting that disease was through breast milk. Uh, then the same same year they set two question and they were, they, another one was the most effective control measure. The most effective control measure. Uh, a good students with underline the word most effective control measure. When I was discussing the topic, I talked of controlling measures and prevention measures. And I said controlling measures are done for general public, for everybody to know while preventive measures is for individuals. So when we talked of controlling measures for that question, is uh, uh, we have public awareness on HIV, voluntary, that is individual, voluntary counseling. It is for you to decide for, to go for that test. Then we have mass education, then campaign through media. So the best way there of uh, of uh, the, the best effective way of controlling this HIV is through making everybody to know about it. And that is public awareness of HIV and AIDS. We cannot take choice D because choice D, some people does not have this, uh, these other uh, uh, social media uh, gadgets like radio, television. So it is just very, uh, it is easy for you to tell people through public awareness. Then in 2016, the question was very easy. They set about the stage. And uh, the first stage, that one was very simple. And uh, with this our discussion, the previous discussion, I hope all of you are capable of answering that question. Then in 2017, it was, it was also about the, the statement, which is very true. Remember, that one will uh, lead us to go to myths and misconceptions about HIV and AIDS. That is class five word, work. Then in 2018, they started adjusting and setting questions on health education class eight work. So in 2018, they set three questions. And that is, the first one was, 
the disease characterized by discharge of gray yellow pus burning sensation during urination is that one was a very good question and uh, remember we said when we are dealing with gonor uh, gonorrhea and syphilis and chancroid only syphilis you will not feel uh, pain but the remaining three the remaining three the remaining three or two let me say two according to that question you must have pain so the correct answer there was gonorrhea reason because there are some difficulties to pass urine then the, the another question which they said in 2018 was uh, which one of the following myths and misconceptions statements which are true about hiv and aids uh, that might lead to increase of spread of hiv infection so the first one you can see there fat people have no infection that one was very wrong and i think that one was the most dangerous one that if people can make such assumption it was very easy for the spread of hiv and aids then uh, in the same year uh, the third question was about uh, the best preventive measure against sexually transmitted for adolescent abstain at the beginning i said abstain is for unmarried people at the beginning then uh, we also have uh, seeking medical treatment remember these are children who are in adolescent stage use of condom is for married faithfulness is for married so a good students will at least will try to vary two choices there that is abstain and seeking medical treatment but why do we do with seeking medical treatment you will only get treated when you are suffering from a specific disease so that one will automatically help you to know the best answer that you can pick then in 2019 they that is last year they sat only four questions i have said since 2018 uh since 2018 they have had uh, they have adjusted setting questions under health education so in 2019 they gave us uh three questions that is last year which one of the following pairs of diseases only consist of sexually transmitted infections remember at the beginning of our lessons i gave you almost four uh, if not five sexually transmitted infections so if you look at that question the first question they said that year it was very easy for those who are doing revision but those who are just sleeping and waiting for others to do for them the work it was not such much easy for you so if you look at that question we have uh, question a we are uh, answer a we are doing away with it because we have malaria malaria is not sexually transmitted infection you go to option b we have measles and hiv measles is not then we go to question c uh, which i think was the best answer for that question then uh, the second question which was set that year was um, the third stage of hiv infection when i was discussing that you saw it that is symptomatic or uh, uh, symptomatic stage then uh, the third question uh, the same same year that is last year the main effect of hiv and aids uh, to the nation the effect of hiv and aids to the nation so that one was also a very tricky question you can see choice a, increase on medical expenses poor health uh, stigmatization and lack of parental care lack of parental care that is for individual then stigmatization is also individual so the choices might uh, was supposed to be either a or b but remember this hiv affects the whole nation so i think the best answer for learners was to the government or the nation will be using a lot of money for medicine then the last question in the same same year the best way of preventing the spread of hiv and aids the best way of preventing remember i talked of prevention measures and controlling measures so the best way of preventing hiv aids among youths was 
they abstain. So that is how the questions were set for this HIV. So if you look at the, the, the style uh, which these examiners are using, they do dwell much on health education. So with those many remarks, I think it is good for you, at least you do more revision on this question, on this topic. So uh, I might request you that in case of any question, you can see a number that is being displayed on your screen there. You can send some of the questions or some of the, uh, uh, you can ask question or you can tell us uh, some of the areas that you are, you want to know much on health education, more so in class eight and class uh, six work. Remember diseases, most of them we have uh, in class eight and class six works. In class seven, we only have, uh, we only have uh, uh, health education dealing with drugs. So with those many remarks, may God bless you. You can send the questions on the WhatsApp number that is being displayed there. May you have a, a nice day as you continue revising science. Thank you.